back to the Roundup. I'm Lori Lattimore Volkman, and I am here with the one and only Chris Harris Jr. Better known to Broncos country as Strap Harris, the Super Bowl 50 champion had 20 interceptions and four and a half sacks as a Bronco, and was named to the NFL's All-Decade Team for the 2010s. Nice defensive play right there by Chris Harris. He is undrafted out of Kansas. Picked off by Chris Harris. The rookie out of Kansas. Rivers going left and it's intercepted by Chris Harris, who's all the way home. What a comeback from the Broncos. Blacko fires over the middle and it's picked off. Chris Harris at the 24 yard line. Right there at 37. Henderson, the block at the right tackle. This is Horton, and intercepted. It's picked off by Chris Harris, the top-rated cornerback in pro football, dancing with Bryce Brown, out of bounds at about the 41. Harris has come up with his third interception. Looking down the middle for A.J. Green. Great play by Harris to break it up. Great play against one of the best in all of football. Thanks so much for joining me, Chris. Glad to have you. Oh, yeah, no problem. You are certainly considered one of the greatest Broncos, member of the Super Bowl 50 team, but also one of the greatest undrafted players in Broncos history. Tell me a little bit about how it feels to have been so successful after going undrafted. I always pride myself in um, having that chip on my shoulder. Uh, just uh, me being able to be a four year starter in the Big 12 in college, I always felt that I should have been able to have been drafted. So that was always just something I always kept a chip on my shoulder. And I think um, in Denver's history, I might be one of the top. I think probably out of me and Rod. Uh, I, I got to look at his resume compared to mine. But I know he has one more Super Bowl, but I don't know any if he has all pros or anything like that. So that would it, that'd be up for debate. I know me or him, you know, depending on what fan you have, you know. <laughs> but, <laughs> That's right. Um, right. Yeah, but I think uh, – if they chose him, I wouldn't take it in hard feeling either. He was a great player. But it was tons of, you see all over the league, there's been tons of undrafted players that have been great, um, you know, and uh, I think it's going to just continue to happen like that. You know, scouts make mistakes, GMs make mistakes. <laughs> so there's going to be there's gonna be some sneaky guys that sneak in and show that they, are, they belong in the NFL. Okay, so let's talk about that current team. Was Sean Payton worth the capital the Broncos gave up to get him? Coach Payton's definitely a player's coach, but he's going to bring um, a different level of respect. He's going to expect you to play at a high level, you know, every day. Um, he's he's going to expect you to put in a lot of work. He's going to work. He still has that old school mentality, you know, but um, he's learned how to merge the new school and the old school together. Um, I think the guys are going to definitely um, – love him better because now they have a coach that they've known that's won a Super Bowl, that's won, that's been in uh, NFC Championship games, that's had a great success. So I think it's it definitely worth the pick and something that we've needed there. And definitely because um, it's a different level to be a head coach there. You can, it's hard to be a, a first year coach and understand what it's like playing and, and coaching in Denver. What is it like playing in Denver? We saw the news highlights. The fans had to count down the clock. The fans are booing the coach. The fans, like, yeah. it's a little. It's gotten a little rough. How do you feel about the about the Broncos fans? Yeah, definitely. Denver's the hardest to play. You know, it's a lot of pressure as a player. Uh, it's a high standard there. So at least that's how it was for me when I was there. I don't know. You know, I haven't been in the locker room in a while, so I don't know. But when I was there, it's definitely a high standard. You uh, you, you want to go out there and perform at a high level. Uh, you know, pressure from fans, you know, coaches everywhere, you know. I, I think that was just for me. Maybe because okay. I probably put a high standard on myself to go out there and be the best every game. And I put, put a lot of pressure on myself anyway. So for me, it was it was hard, you know. you had to, It was harder than a lot of other, you know, going and playing for the Chargers. You know, they, they have a lot of fans, but their fans are not like as hard as dedicated as Denver fans. You know, yeah. the Saints fans, um, they they were great. You know, I think I had a great time with them. Uh, their, their fans definitely are hard, uh, but it's just another level of, you know, intensity with the fans in Denver. Especially that Super Bowl year, the Super Bowl winning year, 
Did you feel extra pressure that year or was there like some momentum that you guys just kind of had as we've got this, look at what we've been doing. Nobody knew realized how much longer do we have to pay, you know, and then we get a new coach, you know, they fired, our, uh, I think they fired Coach Fox, right? And now we have Coach Kubiak. Yeah. So, and now we have a new deep coordinator with Coach Phillips. So it was all new, right? So um, it was kind of like starting yeah. from scratch kind of, but but we still knew that we had a, we were, we're a contending team. Uh, we have a chance to be great. great. And we knew with Coach Wade Phillips that we could be a, the, one of the best defenses in the league. So uh, having him join the team, uh, we all felt very comfortable with him on the defensive side. Did you feel not so much pressure, but even just like the honor of being the reason the Broncos were going to win most of the games? Yeah. Well, we didn't really look at it like that at the time, you know. Um, when we look, go back and look at the season, we see like, dang, we had to win a lot of games. Um, at that time, <laughs> we didn't really see it like that, you know. It was always um, taking the team win. We always kept it real tight knit. We counted on the offense, uh, you know, and they counted on us, you know. Even, even, in, uh, we never, it was never an offense versus defense thing with us. It was right. always a, uh, keeping it in a team focus, regardless how we win, try to get it done. We went by a field goal, we went by, you know, anything, uh, safety, safety. Uh, fumble, <laughs> anything. As long as we got to win, uh, we were happy with it. So that was our mindset. Our motto, and um, um, and we always kept it as one. You know, even when after you know Peyton, I think he had a bad game versus the Chiefs. You right. know, um, we we still had confidence in Peyton. You know, we know that he wasn't himself that game because that all game. You know, yeah. and that's that's just what it was. And you know, we played again. I think we lost to the Raiders later on that season. You know, Khalil Mack had five sacks. I mean. <laughs> Like, we can't, we can't, like, it's hard to beat when a guy like this just goes off like this, you know? It's hard to, you know, it's, some of those games were just uh, hard. It was, it was nothing to argue about. It was just like, this man had a great game. You know, right. Peyton had an off game as game, you know, just how it was. So, uh, we didn't, uh, it never was anything to split the team up like that. We had great coaches. And uh, Wade Phillips was a great D coordinator. And um, Kubiak and his offense. Um, it, it was different for Peyton, but I think it fitted what we needed to do uh, to for us to get the games won, to get the job won. Of course, yeah. Peyton wants to run his spread open offense, uh, of course. But um, at the time, we did go back to a lot of that at the end when we start doing our runs. So Peyton got to sprinkle some of that stuff in at the, as he got healthy at the end of the season. We we always joke at Mile High Report that. Kubiak, like the game plan was always, you know, like the run first and more, more conservative offense at the beginning of the game. And then when it was too close and you needed to win, it was like, hey, yeah. just do what you need to do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, we had CJ and Ronnie Hillman. They were, they were an underrated duo. I think a lot oh. of people forget how they were. Ronnie was tough, man. R.P. Ronnie, he was um, definitely about a different pace and speed running back. And then yeah. I have CJ bring that power. So uh, I think they were, we had the underrated duo in the running game. And once they, everybody got healthy and uh, really started uh, gel buying to the system, we started running the ball pretty good. So um, the offense wasn't completely terrible. We had a lot of turnovers, right? We didn't put up 30 something a game like we see now. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, we didn't, all we needed was around 20 points. I think we could have got, we could have got the win. And the no fly zone was just out of this world. Like yeah. in your playing career, I know you've had a lot of highlights. Is that a special year? Obviously because of the Super Bowl, but yeah. more because of the no fly zone camaraderie and just like what you guys were able to yeah. do. Oh yeah, I think uh, we got to play four or five years together. So just effortless, you know, we kind of all understood everybody's role and everybody understood the game plan. And um, everybody was uh, competing who's going to make the next play, who's going to make the big play for the team to win. So I think that uh, made us who we are. It made us one of the you know, top secondaries ever in history, I think. Um, we're number one in, I think, almost every category when it comes to past. Seeing, seeing how we came together, it's going to be hard for another group you know, to be that elite as we were. Uh, I haven't seen it yet, uh, but uh, it's, it's going to be hard. Maybe. As a cornerback and a student of the game, what, when you watch Pat Sertan, what comes to mind? Oh, man, he's a great talent. He's a big size at corner. He can uh, bend. Uh, great stop and start ability to be able to cover these guys. And I think he's done great. Um, I think he had his first Pro Bowl last year. Did he get all pro? I can't remember. But I know he's definitely close to be an all pro. Uh, 
And uh, if he was alive, he definitely should be. Uh, I would have him probably up there in the top three, you know, the top corners so far this uh, going into this season. I like Sauce Gardner. I yeah. really like his game. Um, I think he's still, uh, I think that guy's going to be a league corner. Uh, certain they're going to be battling, you know, the top, top all pro spots for a while. Yeah. So uh, I like Mathis. I think he had a solid, but I think he did a solid job coming in when Darby was hurt. So uh, the, the second day, I put him in around the top 10 right yeah. now uh, in units and um, uh, definitely have a chance to move up. But they got a lot of competition. They got to yeah. go against the Chiefs receivers. Uh, the 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 Chargers loaded up on receivers even more I after know. even already had them like we were here now. Uh, the, still got to deal with the Raiders, right? So um, it's it's gonna be a great uh, year for those guys to really test and see how great they are because I think they play better quarterbacks this year too. So yes. it's gonna be a real opportunity to show uh, what they're made of in that second. Half. What do you think of Vance yeah. Joseph as the D coordinator for the Broncos now? Yeah. Uh, I think it's going to be good for them. You know, he runs a system similar to Ebro. It's similar to Fangio. That's all, you know, similar to Wade Phillips. So, uh, but I think VJ has a little sprinkle packages and things that he runs that um, I'm pretty sure Justin is pretty, he knows that stuff pretty easy. Kareem yeah. Jackson will know it pretty easy because he ran his whole career and with the uh, Texans. So I don't think it's going to be very hard at all for those guys to uh, understand the defense. Uh, Sertan will be, you know, DJ plays, he'll leave his corner on the island. He'll have to be one-on-one on the have to be in zero coverage a lot and have to win. So uh, it's about, um, it's gonna you're going to be on the island in DJ's system. So as a DB, as a corner, you got to, you got to um, relish that opportunity. Um, I, I play great in DJ's system. I loved it. But I made a lot of plays in this system, man. So I loved it. So he's going to blitz a lot. So the D-line and Linebackers and stuff, they're gonna they're gonna love it because they're all he's gonna rush a lot. Um, yeah. so the corners gotta hold up in the back end, uh, you know, and make a lot of plays from that standpoint. So uh but you can't make a lot of plays. You can read the quarterback, jump jump uh jump the ball to be able to get a lot of interceptions in DJ system. So I expect those guys still get a lot of turnovers. Were you surprised at all that he came back to Denver or do you think that was a really good fit for him? Yeah. I was really surprised, you know. I thought he was uh I thought he was really going to stay in AZ for a while because he had been improving that defense for a while. It just shows his humility. You know, he, he doesn't take – it's just business, understanding that that's the way the game goes. And he has a great opportunity to be with Sean Payton, team up with him, and um, be able to showcase his coaching ability again and be able to have another opportunity next year to be able to have a second chance to be a head coach. So I don't think his um, head coaching opportunities are out there out the equation yet, but um, I think it would be a great opportunity to go under a guy that's well respected around the league. Yeah. Uh, Sean Payton, who uh, any organization is going to listen to to see if he's worthy of being a head coach. So I think it's a good move. On that also, what do you think about Russell Wilson? I think it's going to be a team game. You know, he's going to need solid um, up front play by the old line. Um, he's going to need a consistency from a running back. When Russell had great uh, seasons, he had a running game. And so he has right. to have a consistent running game. That's that's um, that's what he had in Seattle. So he's going to need some assistance still, um, still uh, with the with the, coming into a new system. It's going to be a lot of changes when our co- coach Sean Payton is going to want to approach the game, and it's different. You know, he's had his own system, his own way of thinking for a long time. When you've been doing something the same playbook for that long, uh, it's kind of get embedded in you, right? And that's, kind of who you are, right? So he has to change his identity, uh, change his kind of play style with Sean Payton and believe in what he's trying to make him do. And I think uh, Sean Payton is a great offensive coordinator. He's going to try to set him up and set other guys up around the team to have success. So um, if I'm Russell Wilson, I couldn't be any happier to be able to have a guy like Sean Payton who's an expert, at least in offense. I know it's super early and we haven't even gotten to training camp to really see how it takes place, but you know, what would be your prediction for kind of a win-loss record for the Broncos this year? Yeah. It's going to be hard, I think. Uh, you know, I think they have the NFC or AFC East, um, which is going to be very tough dealing with uh, the Jets, the Patriots, the Bills, uh, and the Dolphins. You know, those are, that's going to be a tough conference. Um, of course, the AFC West is always hard. You always kind of go like 50-50 with the AFC, so, you know, <laughs> 
Uh, that's three wins right there. Kind of, you always, you kind of always kind of do that. We usually kind of split at the least. You know, I think uh, I can't. The Chiefs, we have been, they've been sweeping us, you know, for a while now. So Ooh, some people will mark say, that as too long. If we could go 50 50, that'd be pretty good. <laughs> yeah. So we, a lot of people will accept the 50 50. We'll take that, right? Right. And say we win two out of the NF- AFC East, that's, that's five wins right there. So we got to sneak some other wins. You know, um, especially with the uh, playing the Houston Texans, I think they play them guys this year. Uh, Washington Commanders. It's going to be hard. I see around eight or nine wins. Hopefully they can sneak in with that record, but it's going to be hard. That's what I see. I see eight or nine wins right there. Oh, well. That's, that, I'm Is that solid? Nine, we get, you know, like we'll finally get, we'll be above 500 and we won't have a losing record, which be a huge turnaround yeah. <laughs> the last six years. <laughs> So I'd like to finish this with a couple of like kind of rapid fire questions for you. All right. Okay. <laughs> Who do you predict to be the winner of the AFC West? Oh, jeez. Oh no, it's the wrong That's answer. Right. I, I have to answer. You asking me fast, rapid question. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Fair enough. I don't Fair like enough. to say that, but hey. I'm... All right. Well, Until somebody well, knocks them off. Who's going to get the most interceptions for the Broncos secondary this year? Oh, Justin Simmons. I'll go with Justin Simmons. Oh, he'll be free. He'll get the roll. He'll, uh, you know, be able to get those tips and overthrows. And the safety should always lead in interceptions. He should yeah. always lead. He gets to see the ball. He gets to see the quarterback. Uh, he should be able to lead the team in quarterback uh, in interceptions. Who is your favorite wide receiver to go up against? Favorite receiver to go against? Oh, man. That's, that's a good one. It was probably Keenan Allen. We had a lot of great battles. Tyree Hill, uh, Kelsey, those guys are always fun. Oh, man. Let me think of somebody else. Tony O'Brien, that was always a great matchup. Um, just always playing those guys is fun. Antonio Gates was fun. The old, old Gates, he was fun. Yeah. And oh, yeah. I, I, yeah. So it was a lot of fun. Even going against practice with DT and Amaris every day. Oh, uh, and Emmanuel. So that was fun, <laughs> going against those guys. <laughs> Emmanuel. That would be, that, I bet that is fun. All right. So who was the hardest wide receiver you ever covered? Yeah. Oh, Calvin Johnson, Antonio Brown, and probably Gronk. Put those three. Those are the top three guys. Yeah. Because they were like the hardest, hardest six, cigar. five. 250 pounds, those guys. Dick AB Dick. wasn't really that big, man, but he was. No, he's not. Him and, him Megatron and, uh, and Gronk, though. Yeah. Yeah. That, oh, yeah. Gronk was just used to cheat, man. Always pushing off with that big old pie that he had on his shoulder, on his <laughs> arm. So, man, Gronk was cheating, man. <laughs> <laughs> I, it's so funny. I was just going to ask which one played, which which one was the, you know, played the game a little bit under the uh, under the ref's radar there. Gronk. Push it. Gronk. He, he, he pushed all his routes, you know, and they're not calling penalties on Gronk, man, so they remember, let him get away with doing it. Oh, do you remember him in the AFC uh, championship game? In 2015. Yes. Oh yeah, man. We had this man. We supposed to have this man double team. I think one of uh, one of our safeties got hurt, so we were down to. Uh, I think I was playing the dime, and somebody else was playing the safety. So we were at a whole new. It was we were in the samples at the end of that game. People don't realize that uh, we lost all our safeties. We yeah, because all, we was it TJ? Was TJ hurt? TJ was hurt. Yeah. And Stu was hurt. We didn't have, and Broom was hurt. We were down all our safeties. We didn't have any, pa- all our safeties for the whole season. I had to go play like Don. That's how I ended up on Rock. <laughs> I had to go play linebacker. And um, <laughs> pretty much changed the whole, you know, my whole thing of what I was doing and having a new safety in. So that's why we were scrambling a lot in that end of that game. People don't even know. We kind of, it was hard for us to finish that game, but we were able to finish it. It was tough. That was a real (laughs) team win. We needed everybody in the secondary to win that game. Oh, man. (laughs) Is that the one where Roby got the interception on the two-point conversion? Yeah, at the end. Yeah, Yeah. the two-point conversion. Yeah. You know, and if you go back and look at that, we had, when TJ and Stu got hurt, we were, that happened like the fourth, or the end of the third quarter. 
we were in shambles. Man. We were struggling to try to. Uh, that's why they were really able to come back and uh, really make a run. That's all, right. all, all our guys got hurt. People who really don't know that in the AFC Championship. All right. So, who was the biggest prankster on the Broncos when you were here? Oh man, uh, Wesley Woodyard and Bob. Them two just prank each other all the time. They always maybe you come to the locker and you got blue dye in your and your cleats. You know that's that's Bob and Wood. <laughs> Nonstop pranksters. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. What's your greatest Broncos memory? Uh, of course, winning the Super Bowl for sure. Of course, winning the Super Bowl. That was the that was the best memory right there. In the Super Bowl, at what point in the game were you like, we've won, we've got this? Oh, man. Really, uh, before the game happened, we knew that we had the game. We knew, we felt it in the air. We felt it at practice. You know, we had great confidence. Uh, we were well studied. We understood everything that Cam was going to try to do and uh, where he wanted to go and how they wanted to play. So we felt very confident going into the game that we were going to shut them down for sure. Were you guys at all surprised during the game that they didn't really – do more double teaming on Vaughn or like try to, because he was, he dominated from the beginning and they didn't yeah. really answer it much. Um, we, well, we, we, we blitzed a lot. We all, uh, we made it to where Vaughn was able to get one on one. Yeah. You know, we put right. a lot of pressure on me, Roby, and to leave to play man and be able to send five or send six and overload those guys and, uh, you know, with blockers. So, uh, be able to have Malik Jackson, Bob Miller, and Demarcus Brown have one on one, uh, where they can't double team. Yeah. So that's the um, that's that was our game plan right there. Is that you're not going to be able to double team our guys. You're going to push our guys in the back end and be able to bring the rush. So what would what's your prediction for Wilson his TD INT ratio this year? I see him probably having uh, 25 touchdowns, 10 interceptions. We'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> Did y'all take that? I will. We will take that. How many touchdowns did he have last year? Twenty-five touchdowns sounds good at this point. Any touchdowns? <laughs> How many did he have last year? Ah, like I honestly let's, don't know the stat, but up. like twelve or thirteen. I mean, we it was just you know we didn't have a, we had a lot of we we barely scored ten points in half of our games. <laughs> oh man! I, Which Former Broncos coach will have the best year this year. Ajiro Evero or Nathaniel Hackett? Of course, Nathaniel Hackett. He's going with the Jets. You know, he's going to be with Aaron Rodgers. They have a, I think they're going to be a great team. So um, I think he's he's definitely the guy that's going to have a great success next year. All right. I guess it's a good that's answer. That's what I would choose. <laughs> yeah. How many games before McDaniels gets fired this season? I think McDaniels makes it another year. Another, I think they give him his full contract. I think so. <laughs> I think he makes it. All right. The only reason why I say that is because I think they are in a rebuilding stage, and I think they all accepted that. So I don't think there's a lot of pressure on him to win right now. That would be my yeah. guess. That's true. Were you, you weren't you weren't in Denver when he was here, right? You came the year right after. I came one. Yeah, yeah. I missed him. Yeah, I missed him one year. While you were here, did you could you feel how fans in Denver hate Josh McDaniels? <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah, definitely. You definitely hear from the fans. They'll let you know if they hate you. That's one thing. <laughs> hey, Denver fans will let you know if they hate you <laughs> or who they hate. Yes, right, right. Well, Denver fans did not ever hate Chris Harris Jr., that's for sure. <laughs> On July 27, 2011, Denver Broncos signed Harris to a three-year, $1.39 million contract that included a signing bonus of $2,000. What did you spend that $2,000 on? Uh, I think I bought myself like a PS5 or a PS4 at that time. I didn't have any entertainment with me. So I'm just in a hotel, you know, by myself. And uh, that's the only entertainment I had at that time. So once I was able to make the team, really, I didn't even buy that at first because I was in training camp trying to make the team, you know? So right. I think at that time I was, I didn't even have to buy anything because, you know, we, you know, training camp, they cover all your meals, you right. know? So uh, after the team, that's when I finally, you know, bought a game and, 
You know, I think I bought me a little bit more clothes than I had. You know, I had to get some suits. You know, finally made the team. So, um, you know, I didn't have anything when I first came up there. Really, you come to stay out of college, you don't really have too much. So, uh, it was it was definitely um, tried to take it and run with it. But I definitely signed the lowest signing bonus on the team. If you were going to compare the feeling you had at the moment that you you went from undrafted to making the team versus the moment that you won the 2015 Super Bowl, as well as the moment where you were actually finally awarded a contract worthy of your talent. Which one stands out to you as like the, the greatest moment of recognizing publicly how good you were? My biggest thing, I think, was getting an all-decade team. Being able to get that, I think that solidified that I was one of the elite players in that of my era at that time. So. Um, that was one of the major awards that I was definitely um, glad to get because uh, the, the way the All Pro and the way the Pro Bowl selection was at the time when I came in, you know, it was definitely biased because I was, you know, undrafted. Nobody right. really knew of me. I had to overperform so I could get noticed. And, yeah. you know, and really, I, really my numbers or my accolades would look totally different if I was a first round draft pick and still did the same numbers. Right. You know, I probably have way more Pro Bowls than all pros. So, uh, just being able to get that all all decade team, I think that definitely solidified and showed respect that I had over my era of playing. Well, you definitely deserved it. I think fans always feel a little extra special gratitude toward the guys considered the underdog, the ones who really have to yeah. claw to get what they deserve. It's well deserved, but it's also very, very well respected in Denver. Second and six, pulls it out of the belly, and again, unable to connect with Kelsey, covered by Chris Harris Jr. Watch man to man getting on him, it's a run pass option, physical with the big receiver, and then undercutting, getting that hand in there on the big receiver. Blitz coming, pass is picked off, Harris. Chris Harris got a lane to the end zone for the touchdown, second of the game for this Denver defense. So tell me about your podcast. You guys are really going with Let's Ride is the name of the podcast? Yeah, man, yeah. I really started that. That's what fans don't know. I was really saying that long before I was this again. So me and Pat were talking and we were like, okay, let's go with Let's Ride because we're going really, to really bring out the real facts, you know, give them the real insights of uh, from my perspective of how we see the game and um, and how we're analyzing the team and really all news. We're going through all the sports. Main main focus is definitely, of course, going through uh, the Broncos. But, you know, we're breaking down the Nuggets, breaking down all the, really all the sports, our hot news that's going on out there. So it's been fun so far. And uh, I think we got a lot of great insight for a lot of fans. And we do pretty much my life stories or anything that I can be able to help, uh, be able to educate some younger players. We always have questions like that to be able to uh, uplift the younger the youth and questions like um how would what do i need to do to be able to go to the next level things like that what was a hard learning experience for me coming in the nfl or college or high school things like that so uh going a little bit of my life and where i can give them advice so it's been it's been great being able to go through all of it and uh, and also share a lot of experiences you know, a lot of fun experiences with teammates, yeah. you know, like your boy yeah. Peyton, you know, give some good insights and things like that. So uh, we're going to be doing all that. Too. Oh, that's awesome. All right. So go ahead and tell us where we can find you and Patrick on the Believe podcast. You can go to the uh, Believe.com or you know, really all the um, podcast platforms. Um, you can find the Believe Let's Ride with Pat and Chris Harris Jr. on that. And uh, you know my Twitter at Chris Harris Jr. My, um, the same as my Facebook and Instagram. Easy to be able to follow me and be able to keep track with everything. And we'll be posting new clips and um, getting it out there and retweeting it and um, um, getting it out there, blasting it out there um, so everybody can catch on. And hopefully I gave y'all some great insight to what's going on with the Broncos and what, what's going on with the team and, and give you an insight on my life and what's going on with my life and how um, I can uh, be able to help you and things and what's going on in your life to be able to uplift you. So thank y'all and thank you. Thanks for having me. It was great. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. What can we expect for you in 2023? Are you still looking to yeah. join a team? Is that still in the cards for you? 
Yeah, right now I'm just really just taking it day by day, enjoying the free time with my family. And uh, I haven't had this much free time, you know, in 12 years. So uh, just really just staying on a regimen, staying on a training regimen. But uh, it's not like I'm rushing to sign with a team. It's just uh, whatever team, uh, if I find it, it's a great situation. And it's not a major impact against my family, you know, taking me away too much. Uh, I'm definitely uh, think about playing. But right now, I'm at the space where I don't really have to play if I don't want to. <laughs> and uh, my five girls that are, you know, very active and definitely need daddy. So uh, I'm pretty busy at home anyway. So I, it's like a full-time job raising these girls. So uh, oh, definitely, I hear I'm definitely staying trained and staying ready. And just in case, it's a great opportunity and it's worth the, uh, the, the time for me to go out there and play. And so I won't close the door. A, a team in orange and blue that plays at altitude in case they might need you. You'd be ready to jump in. <laughs> I'm going to be ready, man. I'm going to be ready for sure. It's uh, definitely, uh, I definitely went close the door in Denver for sure. That'd uh, be great to come back in and uh, uh, end it off with them for sure. I see that you've been coaching your daughters and I know Peyton Manning coaches his son. So I was thinking maybe the two of you could team up as NFL coaches. Help out the Broncos a little bit. We could use it. What do you think? I think that would work great, man. I think we'd be a good good team for sure. <laughs> definitely have the offense and defense right for sure. Yeah, so, yeah. Whenever he's ready, man, they can definitely, he'll probably be a head coach before me. Or I doubt he's probably even coaching, so he'll probably be like a, a GM or probably running an organization. I can yeah. help him with that too. All right, thanks, Chris. It was really great to talk to you. It's great to talk to you in person. I've been a fan for a long time, so it was oh, yeah, awesome. No problem. Thanks for having me. Oh, yeah.